Hello, my name is Peter Brass. I'm a Forge developer advocate at Autodesk. And in this lightning talk, I would like to share with you a quick way to optimize your Forge to Unity pipeline. There are two ways of bringing your Forge models into Unity. You can use the AR VR toolkit service that is hosted by Autodesk, which allows you to bring both the geometry as well as the metadata of your designs into your own Unity application. Or you can use a Node.js library that can take the SVF format, that is the Forge 3D Exchange format, and convert it into an open 3D Exchange format called GLTF. You can either integrate this Node.js library into your own application or use it as a command line utility. With GLTF files, you can then leverage an ever-growing rich ecosystem of different kinds of utilities and applications. For example, loaders, be it for Unity, Unreal Engine, 3.js or any other rendering engine, or various kinds of mesh optimizers, as we will see later. Also, the Forge model derivative service is considering adopting GLTF as one of its native output formats in the future. Therefore, going forward, if you're interested in bringing Forge designs into Unity or Unreal Engine, we recommend using the latter approach. The goal of this lightning talk is to use the GLTF converter library, optimize the GLTF outputs for both loading speed and rendering performance, while maintaining the support for hovering, picking, selecting individual design elements, and retrieving their metadata from the model derivative service. Typically, AEC designs and manufacturing designs consist of a large number of small parts. This has often a very negative impact on both the loading speed and the rendering performance. This is often addressed by mesh compression and or consolidation. Mesh consolidation is a process where multiple meshes sharing the same material or rendering surface are merged into one and rendered using a single GPU draw call. In the GLTF ecosystem, there are two popular libraries for compression and consolidation, Draco and GLTF Pack. In case of Draco, meshes of individual GLTF nodes are compressed, bringing an, a significant, significant reduction to file size and therefore improvement to loading speeds. In this case, you can see a file of roughly 50 megabytes being compressed down to roughly 10 megabytes in size. However, since the number of objects in the optimized GLTF file is the same, there is often little to no improvement to the runtime rendering speed, as you can see in the FPS counters. With GLTF pack, however, both compression and consolidation is used, which brings even better compression and reduction in file size, therefore improvement in loading speeds. And the mesh consolidation also improves the rendering performance. These improvements come at a cost, however. When multiple meshes are merged into one, you are no longer able to hover or select individual elements of your design. There is a way to work around this, however. When generating GLTF files, you can encode object IDs as vertex colors into the GLTF geometry, as shown in the script. The vertex colors remain available even after compression and mesh consolidation. Later on, when loading your optimized GLTF files into Unity, you can detach the vertex colors from your geometry to avoid the vertex colors to have an impact on the actual appearance of your objects. And you can cache and store the vertex colors for later use. And ultimately, you can use the standard Unity mesh functionality and APIs, for example, when doing hit intersection, to find a triangle of a mesh that's been intersected. And for that particular triangle, you can retrieve vertex colors and decode them back into object ID. We built a small prototype that showcases this functionality where a Revit design has been converted into GLTF file, optimized and consolidated using GLTF pack. And in Unity, the user is still able to point at individual parts of the design and retrieve their object IDs. The sample code of this application is available on GitHub. Thank you for your attention.